Hey tarot friends, it's Dustin from Modern Metaphysique, and today I thought we could hang out and take a trip through the Ferenc Pinter Tarot by Los Garabeo. As always, down in the description box below, you'll find a link to where you can pick up a copy of this deck for yourself, as well as links to my social media where you can reach out and connect, and a link to my personal website where you can book a tarot reading with me. So be sure to check all that out at the end of the video. Also, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe as it really helps the channel and the community to grow. And be sure to let me know what you think about this beautiful deck down in the comment section. So let's dive into this. I was over the hill elated when I heard that Los Garbeo was reprinting um, part of Pinter's tarot work. Now, for those of you who don't know who Pinter is, he was an, a, a, a relatively modern artist who was born in um, Italy, but he grew up in Budapest where his father was being treated for uh, tuberculosis at the time. And after his father passed, unfortunately, um, he decided he wanted to go to art school and he tried to apply to the Academy of Fine Arts in Budapest where he was actually denied admission um, because of his divergent thoughts with the communist ideals of the time. And in 1956, following the Hungar Hungarian Revolution, um, Pinter fled back to Italy, where he actually found work um, as a mural illustrator, which launched sort of his illustration and art career, um, where he became widely known and famous in specifically in Italy for his um, his illustrations in books and magazines, and he even did illustration work for Agatha Christie. Um, he worked primarily in uh, tempera paint, which is a mixture of egg, uh, water, and pigments. And um, in 1989, Pinter painted 22 tarot trumps, which were published by Los Garabeo. Um, the artist unfortunately did pass away in 2008 though, but he did work all the way up until his passing. And his style really is a blend of minimalism, impressionism, and surrealism that is truly unique um, and he doesn't really shy away from the harsh realities of life and I think some of that stems from his upbringing and the environment that he grew up in um, much like a many postmodernists that we see today um, now he's not a widely known artist here in America although I was exposed to him uh, in my time in art school myself and I fell in love with his art um, and his expression of humanity in a lot of his works. And when I saw that Los Garbeo was producing this deck, I got really excited. They have produced um, two other decks based on his work 
prior to this, of course, the original 22 majors only deck that was printed, and then the Tarot of the Imagination, which is another deck that was published, I believe, in 2000 um, by Los Garabeo. But the, the Tarot of Imagination has different artworks selected for the minor arcana. This deck has the same um, 22 majors as the other two decks, but the minors have been kind of reevaluated and images have been moved around. And all of the images are of uh, Pinter's own work and they, um, they were selected through collaboration. And uh, it's really beautiful. So let's dive into it. Now that we have our art history lesson out of the way. <laughs> um, so the packaging is really nice. It's that kind of new matchbox style um, design that we've seen Los Carabao doing of late. And uh, yeah, I like it. I enjoy this packaging, to be perfectly honest. The cards themselves um, are really lovely. And you do get a nice little guidebook. But as always... <laughs> being Los Scarabeo, they give you every language under the sun, <laughs> um, which is fine. It's just, I, I wish that they wouldn't. I just don't see why it's, why it's hard for them to not just print separate books and then distribute them that way. But this is like obviously the easiest, most cost-effective way. Um, so you do get a nice little chunk of information. It's really small. This portion that I'm holding here on the uh, left hand side of your screen is the English section of the guidebook. That's it. Um, the rest is the other languages. So there's some really cool little insights in here, a short little blurb about him um, and interpreting the art of tarot, which I really loved. There's a great little kind of commentary on tarot as art, which we all know I'm a huge proponent of. Um, so it's a, it's a decent little guidebook. Um, now the cards themselves. You get your usual marketing card. Um, the backs, as you can see, are nice. Um, they're very painter painterly, I guess you could say. Um, it says Carpe Diem, and then it has his signature. The one thing that is not great about this is it's not reversible. So if you're big on reversals, it's pretty easy to tell when the cards aren't reversed because the signature and the line Carpe Diem, obviously, um, are upside down. So there's that one thing. The other thing is the cardstock is nice and thick, but it is pretty glossy, um, like a lot of the other decks that we've seen come in this kind of packaging, which is unfortunate. I do think that in the case of this deck though, it definitely enhances the artwork because a lot of his art is on the darker side. Um, and so the glossy nature of that really helps to make the contrast of the cards stand out a lot better. Um, so personally, I'm, I'm okay with it, but the call, the quality is, is decent. It's what we've seen in other decks released from them recently. Um, definitely better <laughs> in moving in the right direction. Um, so let's do our usual little flip through and then we'll come back and talk about what I love and what some of my criticisms are and uh, yeah. Thank you. 
So that is the Ferenc Pinter Tarot. It is a really, really beautiful deck. Um, his artwork is just, I think, a really beautiful expression of humanity, and his majors are just exquisite. Um, obviously, he worked directly with Los Gerbeo to produce the Major Arcana, um, and it's it shows. The interesting thing I did notice, though, is that they did go with the RWS numbering for Strength and Justice, where in the previous versions of this deck, both in the Tarot of Imagination and the 22 Majors only decks, um, the Majors were numbered in the Marseille tradition, so Strength and Justice were reversed in that case. Um, so I did think that was an interesting change, but I don't think it really detracts anything from, from the deck itself. But the Majors are just are really lovely um you really get a sense of the deep sort of understanding that uh pinter has as an artist and as well as the archetypes that he's portraying within um these cards right you have here the high priestess with all of her usual accoutrement of symbolism but you know you get these really sort of surrealist takes on it which i think is just exquisitely beautiful and exceptionally masterfully well done um his artwork is just it's just stunning and it's amazing and i just can't i can't help but be in love um with the artwork here as the strength card is just beautiful um yeah, the majors, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say for the majors, right? You do get his sense of humor, too, a lot in this, um, which I think is great. So things like the hangman, which is like, it's not. <laughs> um, and the moon card in particular, where the moon card is literally uh, mooning you. Um, <laughs> you know, you you get some, kind of his, his little... Uh, quirky sense of humor shining through, which I think is is really great. I, I really enjoy it. Um, but the cards are gorgeous, and in, in terms of reading them, you know, they read just like Rider Waite Smith. All the little bits of symbolism and things like that are there um, for the most part, right? And uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. This world card is gorgeous. The miners are, are really lovely. Um, they are quite different than what we saw in Tarot of the Imagination. There are a lot of similar art pieces that were chosen, um, that were chosen for different cards, which I thought was kind of fascinating and interesting, and maybe someday I'll do a side-by-side -side so we can look at that. Um, but you'll probably notice like a lot of, um, you know, fictional characters or historical figures in a lot of these cards, and that is because a lot of this art was taken from, you know, book illustrations and things like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think... I think it's really lovely and I think it is a really unique expression of the tarot that you know we don't often see um, 
where it's it is a little darker and it's a little more serious um, and it's surreal and it delves into some some deeper sort of human psychological explorations I don't think this is a great deck for beginners <laughs> um, if you're new to the tarot probably not for you um, one of the complaints I did have is some of the artwork that they did chose uh, were, is more sketch-like, while others is a lot more rendered. And although I love Pinter's artwork in general, it would have been nice if all of the miners were cohesive in that regard, where um, they were either all rendered or they were all more sketchy, or maybe there was a progression where, like, you know, the aces were sketchy and the, the tens were fully rendered or something like that. Um, so, but, you know, it's it's hard when you're dealing with an artist whose body of work is, is limited and who is no longer um, here to create art for us. So, but I think they did an excellent job of picking things um, that they, uh, that fit with the meanings of the cards in terms of an RWS sort of interpretation. So, they did really well. I love this Eight of Wands. I just think it's one of the like that is that is the eight of wands right like it embodies the ideas of movement and uh passion and swift action and all of those kinds of eight of wands keywords that we see floating around everywhere this artwork nails it so i think you know they did a really great job of picking pieces that really reflect um, the meaning of the cards but you know you get stuff like this where the ace of swords is pretty intense um, and it looks at it from a different facet uh, that we normally don't get within tarot decks which i really appreciate same with this two of swords which i just think is absolutely beautiful um, this idea of a broken down boat right so there's a lot here to go off of in terms of intuition and uh, normal sort of rote tarot meanings and things like that. So I think it's a really well done deck. I think it's a great deck if you're starting this Ten of Swords is intense. Um, I think it's a great deck if you're looking to flex your intuitive muscle a little bit more or you know if you want to dive into that more shadowy shadowscapes side of tarot i think this is a great place to start um i overall really love this deck um and that's just the art history buff and nerd in me um i loved pinter's work when i was studying art in art school and in fact i graduated art school in 2009 um, and pinter passed in 2008 so he was still working while I was uh, in school. So that's crazy to think about. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love this deck. I think it's a great deck if you're looking to dive into those more um, deeper aspects of tarot or your shadow side or something like this. I think this deck would be great for shadow work. So yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. If you are familiar with Pinter's work, if you like Pinter, um, yeah, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Remember just to keep it constructive, of course. Um, and as always, I super appreciate each and every one of you coming to hang out with me and check out this new tarot deck. And always remember, that everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. So be kind, always. Bye, everybody.